Hey there friends, thanks for checking in. I'm sure by now most of you are aware of a shooting that took place at West Freeway Church of Christ near Fort Worth, Texas, where a shady person walked into the service and was participating in the service, but the security led by Jack Wilson, many people are calling him a hero, but the security team led by him was onto this guy. They said he had a three quarter length trench coat, he had what looked to be a fake beard and a fake wig. They said he just did not fit in. And they had eyes on him and they were watching him. And then not long after the communion, this guy gets up a couple times and they're watching. So what's going on with him? And ultimately he pulls out a shotgun and gets two shots off and unfortunately takes two lives. The reason they're calling Jack Wilson a hero is because he who led the security team at that church pulled his gun and took one shot to the head from 30 feet away, made contact and ended that scenario. Now, as bad as all that is, and it is bad, two innocent people lost their lives, it could have been so much worse. And that's why they are calling him a hero. He currently is grieving because two of his friends are now passed away, but he is, he's a hero. But let's think about this because anytime that there is a active shooter there are so many lessons to be learned like we cannot plan for this you know how, how do you know when a, an active shooter could just show up somewhere and, and start shooting and then we can't plan for that so the key is to plan in all areas always be prepared but there are three lessons that i came up with from this and we'll see what you think and if you agree first off Never devalue the importance of a good guy with a gun. Now, I know that sounds basic and, and common, but there are anti-gun people out there all the time that will say something like, well, you think, you know, more guns is, is good? Adding more guns to any situation is good? Well, it was the governor of Texas who who uh, made it to law that, or, or allows, I guess, I'm not sure if it was law, uh, churches and places of worship to have an armed security presence there. In September, it was Joe Biden who said, that's irrational. The, the governor of Texas should not be doing that. That's irrational. More guns instead of less? You think that's a good thing? Well, absolutely I do. More guns in the hands of good people keep a safe society uh, safer, and we know this, but, you know, a good guy with a gun once again saves the day from who knows how many people could have been killed. Lesson number two, never devalue the importance of training. Now you've heard me say it, you've heard other people say it, and I know many people watching this have said it's always been something that they were going to do. Like I was going to go to training, I was going to do this, or I was going to sign up with this instructor. I can't think of a better time to do that than now because training is a way to gain skills gives you ideas of, of areas that you are weak in, areas that you are strong in. It gives you uh, a better presence of yourself with your firearm and what you're capable of and, and also what you're not capable of and other things. But also, one thing that's never talked about is that if you ever have to use that gun in a self-defense scenario and you find yourself in front of a jury you can show that you're not just your average guy with a gun. They may look at you like a vigilante, but no, you will be seen as an expert when you show these certificates of the training courses that you have completed. It will, it will raise your value as a defendant because you will be a trained defendant, not somebody who just has a permit to carry a gun. Number three, we hear so many times that people say, you know, 95% of self-defense situations take place within three, three feet or three yards. All I have to do is pull my gun and shoot. Well, in this case, it was 30 feet. 30 feet away, he had his head shot, and he even had to wait. It, it all, all went down in six seconds, and he had to wait an extra second or two to get a clear shot. It could have been sooner than that. So when I hear people say, well, you know, everything was going to take place within this feet the the kiss of death is when you try to 
predict how it's going to happen to you, how the active shooter is going to be, how the home invasion or the carjacker, how that's going to happen. And, and you have a, you may have ideas, but you can't predict it. You can't predict predict where or when. They don't make appointments. They, they are trying to use the element of surprise, and you will be surprised. Jack Wilson said he was surprised, although he was very much aware and very trained. See, he well, he is a firearms trainer. This guy knew what he was doing. He knew how his security team was set up. He was well prepared and ready for this situation. Although he is grieving because he lost a couple friends, he was extremely successful, and many of us need to learn from that. So when I hear people say, well, it's only three, three feet or three yards away, that's mostly for law enforcement. It's not for your average self-defense scenario with citizens. I mean, Consider being at a grocery store and somebody shooting at you from down the aisle. You may have to make that shot. And if you can't hit that shot, then, you know, that's maybe that's something you need to work on is some distance shooting. Whatever the case, that's a myth. Don't fall for it. Train in all areas and let the scenario here be an example of a good self-defense situation that really did save lives. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.